So there's my working. Let's just have a look at this because this is something which um, we're going to encounter, I promise, in many questions uh, in the exercises and in your assessments as well. What if the area that's between the two curves, what if that area crosses the X axis? Now you can see I've put all these warning signs here, right? Because we spent like a good amount of time warning you that when you integrate, you get areas that are negative or you get values that are negative if the area is beneath the axis. So what we've been trying to do is train you to be super cautious when you're like, ooh, there's an area beneath the axis. I should treat it like differently. I should you know, take it se separately and deal with it over here and then deal with the rest of it positively, right? Now, if you're looking at this and thinking, oh man, like this is a mess, right? Like if I were to integrate, how, how would I divide this up into appropriate chunks? Well, um, it seems to me like you've got, you've got this section here, this section here, at least that's all positive. So I could form an integral for that. That would be all right. But then when you have a look at this part underneath, you're like, okay, I can integrate. Uh, let's see, let's use a different color. I can integrate from here to here for the red curve and I just need to slap a minus sign on there and then oh man like what on earth am I gonna have to do with this guy over here like it's between both curves but it's negative and like my brain hurts okay so what do I do with this is this going to be a real nightmare to try and work with and the answer is no, mercifully, um, and there's a really simple reason why and I'm just going to show that to you really quickly right now. Let's just suppose I didn't want to deal with this whole positive negative business, right? I'm like, that's gross. That hurts my brain. What could I do here to make this easier for me? Now, um, there was someone who, I can't remember who it was. Mrs. Lees, maybe you have a better memory than I do. Someone was having a think about a, a problem over the last um, few days where they said, can we just consider this as an area somewhere else? Like, can I move the graph up and down so that I don't have to worry about positives and negatives? I don't have to worry about going to the y-axis instead of the x-axis. Now, I can't remember who did it. Someone might be able to put their hand up in the chat and say, it was me. I did that really smart thing. I'm going to do uh, a similar thing here and use that trick, okay? So, yeah. Was it you, Max? Was it? Hmm. I thought it was someone else. Nice, nice taking your credit since I can't remember, but anyway, that's, that's fine. Um, what are we going to do here, right? Let's just imagine this f of x and this g of x. If I took this same area and just slid the whole thing upwards, right? If I shift it far enough, eventually the whole thing is going to be above the x-axis, right? Like I, I've, I've got no scale here. I don't know how big or small these things are. But if I added like say, I don't know, maybe if I added one, that would you know, move both of them up a little bit. Maybe that wouldn't be far enough. Maybe if I just added a hundred to both of them, that would make it far enough. A thousand, doesn't matter. Let's just suppose I move both graphs an equal distance upwards because they're moving together. The area that's enclosed between them will be equivalent. Okay. I guess uh, if you want to think about a numerical example, right? If I said, you know, uh, what is seven take away three? Well, if I move both of those numbers up, by 100, well, 107 take away 103, the difference between them is the same. So I can use this technique if, if it's helpful to me, okay? Now watch what happens if I try this out, okay? With this particular one, you remember, I've got to work out the top, take away the bottom. Top, take away bottom. So in this case, um, this is the function on the top. So I'm going to say my area equals, I'm gonna integrate from some place to some other place, again, um, some start point to some end point. Okay, and I'm going to do the top function, which is the blue one, with respect to x, and then I'm going to subtract the bottom function, which is my red one. Okay, so again, it's from the same start to the same end, and um, this function has also been raised up 100 units, so it's, it's also gone up. Okay, all right. Now, what happens when I try and simplify this thing? Well, just like before, I'm going to try and reduce these multiple integrals into a single integral, right? Um, so because I notice, again, my boundaries are the same from A to B, I can just take the two integrands, which are uh, these two things here, the things being integrated in here, and I can just do a straight subtraction. So I'm going to get, uh, let's see here, g of x plus 100. And then I'm going to subtract everything that I saw in the red integral, which is I'm, I've got an f of x and I've also got a 100, but I'm going to subtract that, right? Now, hopefully at this point you can see what's happening. Even though I had to add 100 to both of them to move them both up into positive territory, um, you can see 
that I've got this plus 100 and this minus 100. So they're exactly cancelling. Now, Abby, you've asked the question, why is g the top function? Have a look closely. Which one is above and which one is below? It's, it's hard to see with the colors because the shading kind of takes over. But the, the blue function here, which is g of x, it goes over the top. Can you see that? It's the one going over the top, like so. Oh, I missed, you get the idea, okay? And that red function underneath, which I see Mrs. Lees has already typed about, here's the red function underneath. It's clearly on the bottom of the green graph, okay? So, blue take away red, top take away bottom. You've just gotta be careful for which one is which. Okay, now let's finish out this working and we're gonna see, thankfully, um, this means that it doesn't matter too much whether my um, area crosses the x-axis. My integral is from A to B. My 100s are just going to cancel out, so let's go bang, bang, and what I get left with is g of x take away f of x, which is the same top take away bottom that we saw before. It almost doesn't matter whether the area is above the x-axis or beneath the x-axis. There are going to be negatives, but they all kind of cancel out in the wash as I've just demonstrated here. Okay, so therefore, what's our conclusion? It's still top take away bottom, wherever the area happens, ooh, that's a funny M on the end there, wherever the area happens to be, even if it's beneath the axis, um, top takeaway bottom will get you there. And um, one of the, the weird things about that is, if both of your graphs, if, like, if your entire area is beneath the axis, like something like this, uh, roop, roop, here we go. If your area, <laughs> let's use a color, because I've got colors. If your entire area is underneath here, when you're doing top take away bottom, because you're doing a negative take away another negative, it ends up positive. So the area between two curves, so long as you top take away bottom, are you sick of me saying that yet? So long as you get the order right, you will always get a positive area. Okay, so um, I used an example of 100 there because just to illustrate, I'll just take it up as far as you need to to make it all positive. But if it were 1,000 or if it were 1, whatever you like, it will always cancel since you're moving both functions the same distance. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna take a breath there. Let's just make sure we get this all together. When you are dealing with the area between two curves, um, you're going to work out the areas just like you did before, but you'll do a subtraction, top, take away, bottom. Even if the area you're dealing with crosses the x-axis, so some's positive and some's negative, top, take away, bottom will still make sure that you get all the right answers because um, everything will sort of cancel out in the wash as it were. So you're now ready to progress with the rest of exercise 1F. We started on that yesterday. Uh, Max, you gave a big shout so that you could say, oh, it's a short exercise, that's great. Well, now we're giving you the rest of it. So I'm showing you here. Um, these are the questions in exercise 1F that I'd like you to continue working on. Um, we did three and four right there in the middle, but now you can come back to one, two, six, nine, and 11. Now, when you keep on going, um, some of those later questions will become more complicated because what will happen is, and I'm just gonna draw you a quick and dirty example, rather than having a graph where um, it's nice and neat, and for example, you've got something like this, and when you're working out that area between the two curves, there's only a single area, okay? So it's like, oh, I just need to find out where it starts and where it ends. You're gonna encounter problems where the graph is much messier. So you might have something like, let me get rid of this guy. You might have something like this. And uh, because you've got more areas here, you're gonna have to deal with this guy over here and this guy over here, and you, you are gonna have to deal with them somewhat separately, okay? So as you can see, that's much more complicated. I want you to go ahead and take some time on your own to watch the video um, that says um, areas between, oh, what does it say? I think uh, er functions that cross multiple times. M functions with multiple crossings, I think, is what I called it, okay? So you can go ahead, there's a couple of worked examples in there.